Okay, Roger, once again, I told you I will give you the, the keys to free energy and how to construct a Venturi. I am not going to do it myself, but you can very easily do it. These are the particles of light. As when they accelerate and, ex and explode at a Venturi, which I will show you how to design, the black and the white balls separate. Now, that happens to be red. But green has the same particles right there, the exact same particles, only they're much, much more energetic. And I will show you how to actually separate these exactly what CERN wants to see. The black ball separates from the white, and the white turns into electron showers. The black ball doesn't. The black ball just keeps going on its own way. Now I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to show you how to design that that Venturi, and you can do this basically in your garage. Rod did. Rod Warren is the one that came up with this Venturi. It was just basically an accident. He got really lucky. The Venturi was just perfect to keep the black from getting through and the white not to get through. Now, I can see this happen in his work absolutely flawlessly. Nobody else as of yet has been able to, I don't think anybody's really tried to be perfectly honest with you. Rod's been doing this for years and years and years. He still does it today. It's Rod Warren. He's on YouTube. And he's, he's kind of a uh, an experimenter guy. He's not into the atomic theory part very much at all. And, you know, it was just a fortunate coincidence that I happened to see his pictures show up online many years ago. And he was gracious enough to to do the things that I asked him to do to see if what he was showing was what it is. And it is what it is. And I'm going to show you because you can do it yourself. And if we do this correctly, we're going to have free energy. And I mean free. And I'm not talking about something that has a big complex thing. I'm talking about something you carry around your hand and plug it in anywhere and run machines, cars, houses in a, in a little shoebox device. The energy increase here is absolutely staggering, and the cost of the components is virtually almost nothing. This is literally what was used to do this, exactly this right here. This exact equipment, exactly this. Nothing special, and you don't need anything special. If you look up, you know, smartphones used as cosmic ray detectors, that's how this was done. That was seven, six, seven, eight years ago they were doing this. And so were we. Everything I intend to show you, you can do at home for li literally next to nothing using a smartphone, a little laser, pulsed laser, and a very f finely tuned Venturi. And I will show you how to make that Venturi. When these came in, the muon neutrino was the black ball, the white ball was the electron neutrino. The white ball turned into showers and the black ball just kept going, but this turned into big white showers. And I can show you why, because the electron neutrino is explosive. It's concussive and it's explosive. That never changes, not a bit. It doesn't absorb, emit, reflect, or compress. Totally the definition of dark matter. Now, we separated these particles once they were attached. And here they are separating. The black one is separated, just like I said before. When they came in, they were actually in a box configuration like that. One this way and one that way. So it's like two bar magnets. When they hit, boom, they all separated. The black's too big and too heavy to get through the slit, if the slit is engineered correctly. Now, I'm going to show you how to engineer that slit so the white can squeeze through, because the white can squeeze. The white is more or less like this. And when it hits, it just crushes and goes through. This is, no, I can't get through there. I cannot compress, I cannot emit, I cannot absorb, I cannot reflect, and it just goes around. But this one can do all those things, and it does. Extremely explosive. All right, like I said, I'm going to show you how to design this Venturi. It's extremely simple. You could do it in its shop in high school. Very, very simple. And all it is is a little Venturi to have to be able to adjust. I will show you exactly how to do it and exactly what it should look like. And then if you can get this same result, which Rod Warren did, it accelerated the light from the pulsed laser. And what you have is a wave, and the wave is created because of that little 
particle that I showed you that looks something like this coming through the air and now it starts to stack up and right here you get to where it's the black and white box of particles and then the black goes around and attaches here. In this area it's extremely increased energy. From here, which is almost nothing, to here, which we added nothing whatsoever except the Venturi, which I will show you how to design. If you can do this and get free energy, it's just amazing. Because we could put, a, I believe, a solar collector right there somewhere. All right. As it comes through here, the laser pip, 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 through the Venturi, which I will show you here, and then we put the solar collector here. And then we collect this into batteries or whatever you want to do with it after that. Once you have that energy, you do anything you want. And, and there's enough so that you should easily be able to feed back to the laser and get an enormous increase of energy coming out. Supposedly, 5 watts of laser should give us 1,000 watts of energy. That's 200 times. If that's true, and it looks like it could very well be, that's free energy. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. It's very, very simple. All right, just so you understand what we got going. Here's the red laser. Pip, 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 pip. It would never go any more concentrated than this until we fed it into the Venturi. And the Venturi is here. And as I told you, that's it. It's two little nails. That's all that was here. And I'm going to show you how to design it and how to be able to tune it. Rod just got really lucky. And when I saw what he did, I freaked out. And this is the particle that shows up. This is a 2P2H particle. Look it up from Cornell. They understand this is the neutrinos. And, and they said if we can do this, we can make tons of energy for free. Because they had already seen an excess of energy. But that was back in 2013. They lost track of it. Well, we never did lose track of it. And I can tell you right now, that thing there is going to create one hell of a lot of energy. As I showed you, and this is exactly what CERN and Fermi Lab want to see. That's the muon. That's the black ball is the muon, the black ball. The white electron is the electron showers is here before they were attached together. They don't understand that because they're not working with light. We're working with photons, which are these particles. We don't have to look at a whole bunch of garbage all together and try to guess what's going on. They don't even know these are attached, I don't think. But these are attached, as I showed you before. And let's just look at it one more time. I don't want you to lose track of what it is. This is the photon right there. They're attached. The black and white ball. Black and white ball. Two bar magnets back to back. And then as they go through the air, forward, the leading blower bangs into the particles ahead of it which are other charged particles, so it begins to glow more. Now remember I told you, the black is, it never changes, it never changes. The white is a glowy, puffy thing. And you could tell that for a fact, because look at the other white one, it's not as glowy and puffy, because it's not concussing. This is blocking it. As this b builds up to get bigger, 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 all of a sudden it'll go bloop, and then it'll go bloop, and the, this black one will go here, and this white one will come up here. So now this one will start to grow. That's what gives them the oscillation, the flop. And it all starts just right from that particle. And that particle is a photon. And half of that particle is an electron. And this is an electron neutrino, which is the glowy explosive part. That is a muon, which is gravity and dark matter. Nobody's ever seen it before. It doesn't, it's all dark matter. Look up to what the dark matter does. It does nothing. It, it's, it doesn't admit, it doesn't absorb, it doesn't interact in any other way other than gravity. And they didn't even know that until, this is, this is absolutely no question, this is gravity. And after it comes through, they get sucked back together like, here they're, they're still attached back and forth, black and white. Here they separate, here they come right back together, fission, fusion. So we got a little thinking to do, and here's how you're going to do this venture. Very, very, very simple. You could do this in high school shop. I would have been doing this no problem if I was young. Right there, there it is. That's all it is. That's a Venturi. And what does a Venturi do? It takes a large volume and compresses it down to a compact volume. And what does that do? It makes all the fields compress into each other's fields. Because every one of these particles has a field surrounding, a huge field. 
And now they have to interact with each other's fields. And then they become literally plasma. And I will show you, this is not a good design right here. This is not the correct design. But it gives you, I'm going to draw in the correct design. The key to this is, is a movable flanges to go in and out. All right, well, whatever you want to call them. They're, these are the adjuster, the tuner, that's going to tune how compressed this is. And we don't want the black ones to get through. We only want the white ones to get through. I'm going to just design this for you right now, how you can make this in, in metal shock. Okay, as I believe I have shown you, we have the muon neutrino and the electron neutrino. Back to back, they make a photon. That was what came out of the red pulsed laser, as I showed you quite clearly, I believe, and I will show it again to be certain you understand. This is the leading edge going that way, concussing and glowing. This one is diminishing because it's trailing. So it shows that there is a push to shove of all white particles, and all it's only the white particles. The black want the white ones attached to them, and they don't care about being on top of each other. There is no repulsion whatsoever from the black ones to the other black ones. There's only attraction. That's it. They don't concuss. Well, they, they concuss, and they divide, but they don't compress let's go with that and they don't emit they don't absorb they don't reflect that's dark matter and they are attached to what we would always consider an electron some electrons are very energetic electrons like this one and some are less energetic light had the leading one gets more energetic in electricity the one that's getting pushed the hardest is the one that gets glowier so that becomes the most energetic and that's what's called voltage. It's pressure, basically. And we are creating enormous amounts of pressure by crushing these fields into a compression that makes them actually literally separate. All right, all the light works the same way. It accelerates into a venturi. The black ball can't get through. The white ball can get through. And if you look at it as close as you can look at it here, you can see the black balls don't go and this is a hundred percent white and then the black balls come back and they don't mind being on top of each other that's the key the white ones don't want to be next to each other that's why you get this separation pattern single slit this is a separation pattern due to repulsion not because of overlapping flaps and that is the wave that is the magnetic field that surrounds that black and white particle there's in the middle here causing all these other particles to glow as it forces them to get out of the way. Now, here, the explosion is backwards. You see, it's blowing back against these particles. It's just enormous, absolutely enormous increase in energy. It's way, way, way more energy than we started with. And that's what they claim is supposed to be 207 times more energetic if you can separate the muon from the electron, which we did. It was supposedly the neutrinos. And we created the electron showers and the muons, the black ball. All right, just so you don't lose track, these are the high-speed particles coming in. And they get these high-speed particles by smashing them at CERN. And then they see muons created and electron showers, and they just see them in the debris. We see them right here. We saw this box of particles come in there, the black and white particles, and then it separated. We started with light. We didn't start with huge, gigantic particles. They're starting with gigantic things that have all kinds of particles that go every different which way. We're starting with light, which is a single one of, you know, basically a single particle spinning forward. And that's why they spin this way and they spin over that way. Some go that way, some come over the top and go this way. That's primarily why you have these interference patterns. Now, can we see the black and the white separate from the green, highly energetic ones? Yes, we can. All right, you saw the black and the red separate. And the black and the red are, are not powerful compared to the green. See how powerful the green is? And then it re-impacts out here. What happened here is it impact with the, the, the fluff, basically, that the green 
projected out and it pushed it away but in the interaction between it, it's pushed to shove and then you can actually see these particles spinning and um, turning into a vortex of particles because the particles are just being slapped around spinning like that due to this particle and then that one re reacts again further out because it's just so energetic and here's this these are the particles the same ones only these aren't these are a little less defined. All right, this is a real powerful green. Now, for some reason, the only side we see the black particles go on is this side. Here, there is no black particles. So we have effectively filtered them, and I believe it's because the two, this is again, two nails, that's all it is. Two nails and a laser coming out at us, and we're seeing into this. And it's skirting off this way because I think one nail was like in front of the other nail, just a hair, and forced it to to spray the the heavy particles off this way and uh, and let the white particles come off this way. So the the red one I showed you was just an absolute flawless alignment, and we could see a complete separation, but black all the way around. This we're only seeing black over here. I don't see any black here at all. Not a single one. And they're just saturated with black over here. If I come in close you can see. It's just saturated with it. You see it? Those are all the black particles. They're everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But on the other side there's none. Zero. Nada. Not a single one that I can see. I find that very interesting. <laughs> I don't know about you, but whenever I see anomalies like that, I say, what the hell is going on? You know, th these we have the same Higgs fields. These are a little more reactive than the red ones, but they're still the same Higgs. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to basically leave it at this for now. It's so simple. I don't know what else to say. It's just it's just this simple. These little adjusters have to be able to be able to slide in and out, and then you secure them with a little clamp thing. So they have to slide in and out. This little distance here has to be so small that only the white particles, the little gushy white ones, can squirt through here. Okay, the black ones will come up to here and say, I can't get through that. We'll say, well, get out of the way then. And they, they get out of the way and the white ones squirt through here and they come out the other side and the black ones are waiting for them bang they come back together that is gravity and this is exactly what we see in the experiments now you have to get that venturi correct and I see it both in the black and the red I mean in the red and the green we can separate the particles but it's getting the venturi exactly correct and then coming up with a harvest plate behind it just like this and then we have free energy let me show you the black and the green and I mean the, the green and the red separating the black coming strict uh, fission and then when it comes back it's fusion so that's cold fusion on a desktop using laser and I would say we're harvesting we should be able to harvest a lot more energy than we're expanding to get that separation of particles and it's only because the fields are being forced into each other's field they can't handle that when they do the white ones say I can get through this thing I can get out of here but the black ones say I can't I can't make it that's the key right there